Welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to the Modern Theory of Polarization, a series of modules to help you understand how the electric polarization is defined, calculated and measured in bulk periodic solids. Brought to you by Schrodinger's Kittens Productions. In this module, we'll discuss the concept of the Born Effective Charge, which is the amount of charge that a displacing ion effectively contributes to the change in polarization in a solid. Before introducing the formal definition, we'll take a look at an example that shows why the effective charge on an ion might be different from its usual formal charge. In module four, we use the example of a one-dimensional chain of positive and negative charges to show that the difference in polarization between two lattices is a well-defined quantity. In particular, we saw that when a singly charged positive ion is displaced a distance delta say, then the change in polarization is the size of the charge, plus one electronic charges in this case, times the size of the displacement, delta, per unit volume. In this example, the effective charge of the positive ion, that is the amount that it's contributing to the polarization, is the same as its formal charge, plus one electronic charges. And by the same argument, the effective charge of the negative ion is minus one in units of the electronic charge. In a real material, of course, the ions are not just point charges, but also have some chemical bonding with their neighbors. Let's represent that by showing the negatively charged ions in our chain as positively charged nuclei plus two electrons in an atomic orbital. In the centrosymmetric lattice, those electrons are equally distributed to the left and the right of the negative ion. But as the cations move off center, the electrons shift towards the closer cation where they can form a better chemical bond by an average amount little delta, say. Now, since the positive cation is shifting to the right and the negative electrons are shifting to the left, the change in polarization is greater than the plus one times delta of the perfectly ionic case. And we say that the cation has an effective charge in the sense of the amount that it contributes to the polarization by its displacement that is greater than one. This leads us to the formal definition of the Born effective charge, which is usually called Z star and is given by the change in polarization divided by the amount that an ion or rather the periodic sublattice of equivalent ions is displaced dp by du. In general, it's a tensor because a displacement in one direction j can lead to changes in polarization in another direction i, and it's reported as a number, so it's normalized by the unit cell volume v divided by the electronic charge e. The Born effective charge is a useful concept because it tends to be larger than the formal ionic charge in ferroelectric materials, specifically on those ions that are instrumental in causing the transition from the centrosymmetric to the polar state. Let's compare some effective charges and formal charges in some examples. In the prototypical ferroelectric material barium titanate, the formal charges on the ions are plus two for barium, plus four for titanium, and minus two for oxygen. The ferroelectricity is caused by the titanium ion moving closer to one of the oxygen ions where it can form a good chemical bond. This is reflected in the Born effective charges, which are plus 7.3 for the titanium ion and minus 5.8 for the oxygen that it bonds to. We call these values anomalous Born effective charges. The other two oxygen ions in the unit cell, as well as the barium ion, have Born effective charges that are close to their formal values. 
Lead titanate has the same formal charges as barium titanate, and its titanium ion also displaces towards one of the oxygen ions as it becomes ferroelectric. In addition, its lead ion has a lone pair of S electrons which are stereochemically active, meaning that they shift to one side of the positive lead ion, forming a dipole in the ferroelectric state. We see that the Born effective charges on the titanium and oxygen ions are similar to those of barium titanate, whereas that on the lead ion is anomalously large. Your exercise for this week is to write down the formal charges for the ions in the table below. Then, based on your knowledge of which of these are ferroelectric or not, as well as what kinds of chemical bonding can occur as the ions move off-centre, think about which of these ions are likely to have anomalous Born effective charges. When you're happy with your answers, come back and join us for Module 8 in the series, when we'll use perturbation theory to formalise why some materials are ferroelectric and others not, in terms of the so-called second-order Jan-Teller effect. Thanks for listening.